Hello, everybody. We're going to start our uh, third project for 282 now. We are going to uh, be using a different software called PartsWorks 3D. It's going to be our simplest software to do your three-dimensional milling, um, two-sided milling that we do uh, for this project. Uh, you guys are working in foam again. Uh, 24 inches by 24 inches should be the foam size that you're bringing down to us. Uh, roughly, it, it shouldn't be that much smaller, maybe an eighth inch smaller from the, the blade width. But we need excess material around your cut that will give us room to screw this down. And then when we do a flip, it's going to act kind of like a tab uh, for our object. And then you're going to trim it off with the table saw when you're all done. So uh, what we have to do is you're going to be using your Rhino file. You need to make sure that your Rhino file it only has what you um, want milled inside of it. There shouldn't be anything else, nothing hidden. We'll know right away when we open your file if it is messed up. But you need to take your Rhino file and make sure it's in inches. And then you need to make sure that it is uh, exported as a 3D Studio Max file. It's our uh, the best uh, file type. You could bring in an STL file, uh, DXF file, um, all these different uh, file types that we could bring in, but we found that 3D Studio Max files works pretty good. So I have a 3D Studio Max file ready to go that I've exported from Rhino into uh, 3D Studio Max. You can see now here's my object. Um, it is double-sided as we can see here. This is in PartsWorks 3D. We have to make sure that our scale is correct. That's right here. So I'm going to have to change this uh, to be correct size. And then I'm going to unlock this. We only have a two inch piece of foam, so I'm going to change that. And then I'm going to say top and bottom. Right down here, this is crucial to uh, milling correctly. So I'm going to apply that now. You always have to hit apply. If you don't hit apply and you just hit next, it reverts to everything uh, back to the way it was. So you always have to hit apply and then you hit next. So then we hit next. Then we're going to zero off the middle of this because we're doing the flip again. If you're not doing the flip, I like to zero to the bottom lower corner. Uh, bottom corner but uh, since we're doing a flip we're going to zero right to the middle we're going to zero off the top of our object also um, you don't have to worry about this model silhouette all that stuff because you have a square object if your object was not symmetrical or square uh, rectangular in shape then we could use this model silhouette tool uh, it would save a lot of machine time uh, then what we're going to do is our cut plane right now, right here, is right in the middle. Uh, what that's going to do, if I had this cut plane in a different location, you can kind of see it graze it out. It only cut that part of our object. But uh, this is completely symmetrical, so uh, we're going to put it right in the middle of our cut. And then I uh, hit Apply. So now I have my object. Now we're going to start uh, setting up our toolpath. So we have roughing toolpath and we have finishing toolpath. So it's a little different than uh, 2D milling like you guys were doing before. So how we do this is we have a, our bits that we're going to select. I'm going to do a quarter inch straight bit. Um, and it's already set up for foam, but our pass depth we can do is a max of, I'm going to do it a half inch so you can see what that does. I'm going to apply that. Our step over can never be more than 50%, um, so it just won't let us do it. So we're going to hit OK. And then uh, you could change all the parameters here, but remember our feed rate and plunge rate should be 6 inches per second because we're cutting in foam. So that we have that. Uh, set up for our machine. Our, our raster X and Y, that's only just the way it's going to travel back and forth while it's machining. And then it's going to drop down a level and then machine this off. So I'm just going to hit calculate. And you can notice here that uh, I have calculated on the top of our machine. And then what we all we have to do is to now calculate the bottom, you just left click on the bottom and then hit calculate. 
and it is already done for us. Don't worry about anything that you think that it might get. You don't, don't have to flip anything, nothing like that whatsoever. So we have a top and a bottom. You can see our run times 13 minutes for both sides right now. So uh, something to uh, take into account. Uh, then I'm just going to hit next. Then I have my finishing toolpath. I'm going to select my bit. If you wanted to change bits, you can do so now, but I would suggest using this same bit because you're going to be able to save a lot of time. Um, and it's foam, so if you want to knock down the edges, you can do that. You can raster this along the X angle. You get a smooth finish. You can along, along the Y. You can go at a 45 degree angle. You can raster it all like that. But um, that's kind of uh, the smoothness. You can check out the display wall for the different settings, for the different speeds that you would go um, uh, on the in the CNC room. So you can see what size bit gets you a certain type of finish and how fast it can go. So uh, take a look at those before you start setting up your files. So you can uh, come with us and set this up uh, together uh, with you and you, we know what you want. So I just, I just I uh, calculated this for the top, so that's all ready to go, and then I'm going to hit calculate for the bottom. And that's ready to go there. Then I hit next. We don't need to create a cutout. We're going to do that on the table saw. Now we can do a roughing preview here. It's roughing out the bottom. We can do a top rough preview. So you can see what that looks like. I got my two sides. I can do a finish preview. And then a finish preview. Now I got my object, right? So that's exactly what we were looking for. Um, then all you have to do is hit next. Make sure that that all looks great. Then what you have to do is you have to either click on the left or on the the machine uh, side to machine you either click the top or the bottom uh, so we got a half hour per side but depending on how deep your cut is most of you will be able to skip the roughing pass if you have a depth cut more than an inch then you're going to have to do the roughing pass but i'm just going to save out the finishing tool pass i'm going to uncheck uh, my uh, roughing tool pass i'm going to save out my finishing tool pass. Oop. I have to click save by itself. So it's going to make a label here, save it somewhere you can remember. It's in ShopBot inches, so that's set up right. So it's going to do the top. So I'm going to save that out. And then I'm just going to click over to the bottom. And then I'm going to save out my bottom tool pass. And then that's how we uh, set up our object. So we're all ready to go for our. Uh, milling in 3D. If you uh, have issues with this, you can just go backwards uh, and set this up. Uh, what I have seen when this is the original window is a lot of students, they'll be, this object looks super tiny. It's because you have something off in space uh, in your object. So what you have to do is you select the object in Rhino by itself and you copy and paste it into a new Rhino file and that usually fixes all the issues that you have. You have to do the control C, uh, control V, uh, cut and paste into a new Rhino file uh, to make sure that that geometry stays uh, the same and it only copies um, the parts that you have selected. And then make sure we output to a 3D Studio Max file if you do not have the correct output. Uh, we cannot mill it for you, and you have to, have to, have to make sure that you have an inch border around that outside so we can screw your material down to the bed. We're not going to use the same blocking techniques that we used before because uh, you can see from our milling that we had uh, before, when we have all this previewed out, that the, uh, the object wasn't flat on the top and the bottom. So you want to make sure that uh, if there's just really no way for us to uh, mill it, 
if you don't have that one inch border around the outside. So make sure you have that border and then everything will run smoothly. Come down, it flips along the uh, X axis. So you just flip it uh, in, in the Y. You're just gonna, when you're standing in front of the machine, you just flip it to the left uh, or the right to flip it over. Don't flip it front to back. So that's how it works uh, in the, the machine uh, software. So if you have any questions, come find us and we'll be sure to help you out. Uh, thanks so much.